all yours. Hi, I'm a maker from RNDB, and we're going to see today its graph implementation. The first thing we thought uh, building this product was to have something that was easy to use uh, with the uh, new NoSQL uh, solutions and features, uh, but also with what was good of old national uh, databases. And it happens to be a two graph engines also. Uh, I'll start with the brief features. So it has no configure, you just download, extract and run it. No problem. No dependency, so it's really small and you don't, you don't have problems with uh, any third party software. All written in Java, so you can run in everywhere you can go to JVM. It's fast. We can insert 150,000 records per second in, um, <coughs> on a normal laptop. Uh, its schema is really flexible. You can work with uh, no schema at all, or full schema with constraints, uh, validation, and what else, or a mix of both. We support transactions, ACID. And I think the most important thing of uh, this database is that queries is are done by SQL. So why is that? Uh, everyone knows it. It's <laughs> simple, and probably it's more readable than uh, scripting. So you see, <laughs> what's better? <laughs> what's more? But of um, Obviously, SQL itself was not enough for uh, document database and no SQL database. So we announced it with uh, more features to use uh, collections, uh, maps, uh, trees, uh, and graphs. For example, relationships uh, are accessed by dot uh, notation, just like you wrote your code. <coughs> You can uh, work with uh, sorry, <laughs> work with collections, just like Java. For example, it contains uh, you work with strings, uh, maps. Uh, you can uh, see what sides of, uh, of edges. Uh, yes, sorry. Is it too early to ask a question? No. So if you're doing schema list, how do you do select from something? Uh, in that way, uh, he orient uh, checks if the field uh, is in the document you have. If uh, the field doesn't exist, uh, he skips the document. So you also have uh, <coughs> some uh, projections for check if it's uh, in a property or uh, it doesn't, or check on any field, even uh, within having his name. Basically, uh, you connect uh, to the database uh, with uh, Java binding, Java binary protocol, TCP IP, but we have also a bit of other uh, bindings uh, done, JVP is done in JavaScript, and uh, the community is building also some other more. Obviously, if anyone wants to contribute with its own, they're welcome to do it. If that's not enough, that's an HTTP RESTful uh, API, mm, really simple, that uh, gives you the access to the database, uh, having creating classes, uh, properties, uh, queries, uh, loading a single document, uh, and wherever. There's an import export uh, function that exports directly to the database uh, live online. You don't have to stop it. Uh, create a compressed JSON. So it's also uh, readable for the for any user. Now, let's start with the graph model. What it's important about uh, graph implementation on Orient is that it works on top of the document database. It's, uh, it's not something uh, different from it. So you can work with schemas 
also in, uh, in your graph implementations. You don't have to... No, you can... Uh, you can write uh, what, what you need uh, easily. So, of course, uh, <coughs> for this we support inheritance. That's, uh, you have the main classes, the vertex and edges. But uh, you can extend them any way you want it. So uh, I can categorize my graph and uh, have a faster and easy way to access it, uh, managing and whatnot. That helps us also with polymorphic queries. If I query a, a superclass, all uh, its extended classes will be gotted. Uh, they become the <coughs> results, uh, or I can be more specific and get just what I need. And uh, another useful thing is that data is lazy loaded, but we'll see better later. Now, we have two APIs, one <coughs> on lower level and one highest level. The lower level is not works uh, on um, works with documents directly. Mm. It's really fast, but it's not so good uh, writing its code. The other one, the it works on top of the of uh, blueprints and uh, supports Gremlin. <coughs> it's a l more slower, but uh, it's more portable. It's easy to. Um, Uh, you can use your, as I said, with Gremlin, uh, you have not much of uh, big problems. <coughs> mm. With the first implementation, it's, uh, as I said, it's native, so uh, works directly in Java, really fast. We, you should use it for uh, massive insert uh, and. Now, the Orion Graph implementation also, as I said, it's slower but uh, portable. And uh, what I forgot was it also implements RDF, so you can use it with uh, Spark QL. Let's see. How about so, it in like an order bank difference, or just like quite a slow, or how about? Uh, I don't know. It's <laughs> probably two or three times lower. We have the main, yeah. uh, main container here. Yeah. Because the uh, the uh, low level API yeah, is faster because it creates much less uh, objects in memory. Uh, but uh, Mark Rodriguez showed that uh, with classic collapsing, uh, the performance is about 10% uh, more. Uh, so it's not so costly on traversing, just traversing, but uh, uh, in general, obviously the native API is, uh, is faster. Even because, even why um, you can use uh, SQL to query the graph uh, directly without creating a lot of objects. So this is the main reason. Now, as I said, the data is lazy loaded, so um, we use fetch plans uh, to load what we need at the moment because uh, you know loading a big graph uh, can be awful for memory problems uh, computation problems so if we have to work on just a part of it we can do it uh, by saying to the database what we want to load now let's look at the simple graph the syntax is really simple. You have the star, the wildcard, for saying the root node that's loaded. And then you can access fields. In this case, we loaded just the root vertex. So star double dot zero, it loads all fields or of our vertex. All uh, connection and relationships are uh, are not loaded, but uh, we have uh, their uh, record ID, 
So when accessed, they will be lazy loaded. If you want uh, to load, preload uh, property in from the root record, <coughs> we access it by same uh, dot notation as the queries. So if you just want to, uh, to load leaves vertex, we say leaves uh, double dot zero. In this case, we use your solo CD. If uh, obviously, if you want uh, to load all a uh, graph or uh, all uh, depths of graph uh, from uh, a field, you uh, use minus one <coughs> value. Mm. I don't know how how many of you know about uh, Tinkerpot technologies, but their uh, community that works on. Uh, various open source project uh, about graph databases and uh, the thing we're going to see is blueprints it's a uh, sort of API and the interfaces to many <coughs> property and indexes graph models <coughs> now for the for our examples we we use uh, this graph I'd say that now, if you haven't seen the fifth season, it, there's a bit of spoilers. <laughs> so, spoiler alert. Uh, anyone of you who doesn't know about this TV series? Okay. <coughs> now, that's the uh, highest level uh, API for uh, managing graph. We create uh, a new orient graph uh, giving it its path, in this case a local path. If we have a server running, uh, we use remote, uh, the, the address port, uh, and the, the database name. And we see that it's really simple to work with vertexes and edges. We ask for the database to create us a vertex. In this case, the null value is uh, we want uh, just uh, a vertex. We didn't have uh, any sort of super uh, of extended class to create. So we create a Shandor and Leonard vertexes and we connect them by adding an edge that says Shandor and noise Leonard. Uh, the highest level, high level uh, API works uh, with Gremlin is a uh, scripty language, easy to use, uh, and uh, to traverse uh, work with, with graphs. Mm. The graph uh, implementation of Orient uh, as uh, a Gremlin console uh, in it. So we say we start the Gremlin console. We open our OrientDB uh, database in the uh, same way as before, just by uh, not saying it's local. In this case, we can load the graph in, in an XML graph, or uh, if there's a database already uh, populated, uh, you will load it. And we see where it is. Now, the, the syntax is uh, very easy. We get the graph. Uh, and uh, we filter the key vertexes uh, with name of Sheldon and we see the out edges. In this case, uh, it shows us the record ID of, of the edges and uh, in and out properties uh, with our labels. We can uh, also get uh, the name of these uh, in vertices. So we see, we see that Leonard and Penny are annoyed by Sheldon, and uh, Sheldon is locked by Sheldon. That's the um, embedded <coughs> traverse uh, feature in Orient. It's uh, really simple. We can traverse from uh, a class, can traverse from a record ID, uh, defining uh, what, what max depth we should reach. Or uh, we can also put inner select in it. So 
traverse anything from self from self from science where the name is Sheldon. So traverse anyone and anything that's connected to Sheldon T till that is max two. That's um <laughs> more complete yes? Could you just please go one slide back? Um, how would you do a transitive closure where you don't know the depth? So if you if you start to traverse your, your graph and but you don't know how many steps you would go. How would you do that? Take a door so if you if we start from a node and then say uh, just traverse along all paths of, of type uh, love and then go as as long as you can go. Just the work condition. Just change the work condition. Or change the work condition. Change the work condition to true. It's a uh, it's a simple Boolean condition. So the, the, until the Same. condition is true, the graph is traversed. When it's false, the traverse is stopped. Okay. 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 That, what do you put for the depth variable? In this is this a special variable that you don't have to use it? You don't have to use the depth, you have to specify the depth. You can use uh, attributes, uh, everything, like uh, SQL web conditions. Does this also recognize the uh, circle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when you see that he, he was already at this point, it's not yeah. this bad. Yeah, just once. Uh, we have uh, some pure examples. Uh, for example, we want to say, want to see what name of who, anyone who named Penny, or uh, anyone who pen who who is not Penny. Uh, it's free. <laughs> Open some sort of license, so you can use it for free. There's uh, some. Courses, if you want to, and as we said before, the, it's used on Nuvola Base for the first cloud, the base cloud as service. You can sign up as free and free account with one of the base and play with it. And we we'll see right now what can be. You have uh, your login access uh, in this case. Close them. If you want uh, uh, to know the password is FOSTEM2012, if you want to play with it, there's the there's preloaded the graph we saw before. Please don't destroy it during the demo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the live web app studio of Orient Database. It, uh, when you download the, <laughs> the version, you already have in it. When you start the server, it will bound on uh, port 2424 of localhost. You can configure obviously something else. Now, you, we can see a list of schemas, what we have, structures. At a memory allocation, uh, we have uh, an import export, uh, mostly theory. Now, let's say, query from... <coughs> we can see all our vertexes. Uh, <coughs> and the, we, say we can select one, and there's... Unfortunately, it's a, bit, it's a lot bigger. <laughs> we can have a visual representation of our graph seeing uh, our record ID and all its connections. We can be live selected. We can edit our records. There's a we can look we can command it. No, I have some live example. For example, we can try the 
the perverse I showed uh, on the slides. So if you want to see who made penny in uh, no more than two depth. You see? <laughs> Or uh, we have name the surname from uh, anywhere, any who annoys Penny. See, we have Howard and Chevron. Obviously, uh, the that, uh, the document implementation and the SQL language uh, gives us a lot of features to get what what we need at the moment. Uh, so let's hear a little bit about this. We want to know the name of anyone who Sheldon annoys. So, yes, uh, we don't need uh, a traverse to know that. So, just do it and execute our query. And we have their names. Uh, important thing is uh, all. Uh, um, when I don't have a record uh, precisely that comes from uh, my query, it creates a new record with uh, and all all fields uh, that that you put in th in the select. So uh, in this case, uh, you can get just the name. You won't have a record with uh, with their record IDs. If you want uh, also record that, there's. there's uh, Wild card for taking record name. Now, starting from before, you, uh, we get anyone who annoyed Sheldon. Then we want to traverse that uh, the query we had from before and in uh, for that level and see anyone who was connected with him or them <coughs> now as you see we right now we didn't get, didn't give uh, the traverse and uh, any projection ending so we get all the results uh, as uh, real documents First part of this JSON is the schema. Then we have all results with the record type, version, read, and uh, their properties. In this case, uh, we can see we have both edges and uh, vertexes. Then maybe we want for the same uh, result, uh, but we won't know what relationship, in what relationship they are. So we can just put uh, another select around to filter it and see the name of the invertices, the label of the edge, and the uh, name of the vertex. No, we will we'll see. In this case, uh, it's a little bit different, obviously, from uh, working as uh, native in, in your code. Because uh, this works with uh, JavaScript API and uh, HTTP REST APIs. Uh, so the our communications are in uh, JSON. And when we load uh, something, uh, all connection, if not fetched, uh, there will be just uh, the record IDs. 
in case of uh, working native, so now with HTTP, record IDs are uh, just objects. So when you, as I said, when you accept, mm, access it, it will be loaded. In this case, or you either load the old graph or uh, store somewhere what you need uh, after to rework it. I think for me that's about it. If you have any other questions. Yes. Yeah, is it possible to customize the traverse algorithm? So the traverse algorithm. Yeah, for example, I have a specific method, a custom method that is called for the traverse. Uh, not right now, but uh, it's planned to um, enhance it uh, with uh, custom features or uh, not really functions, but uh, a sort of like Remlin, storing uh, values and uh, having them in a context for later. <coughs> It was good to see a new example, but what happens when we have a very large graph? Yeah, all um, your process. I would assume we're, we're indexing this graph. Mm -hmm. And if I'm, if I'm having a very large graph that I can't fit on one machine, <coughs> then what about the synthesis? Uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear a uh, lot. Can you lower your voice? Oh, I'm sorry. Lower. If, sorry. If you have a very large graph, okay. then um, how large can your Indexes, you know, I mean, if, it, if it's so large, I can't put that on one machine. Yeah, uh, Orient also have an embedded uh, multi-master clustering system. So uh, in this case, uh, you can uh, choose on to create to, to start new service and connect them. They can work uh, synchronously or asynchronously. You can uh, either put uh, uh, some uh, a list of classes in one server, and the other in uh, another server. The, when the, and the client will know who to call when uh, to load the something. So I have to decide about the partition, and I have to demand that um, my queries and my application will have to know. Mm, not, not really. Your client uh, will, uh, the or your client will know who to call uh, when he needs something, or he calls his master uh, server and he will reject him to what the data is. There is no replication. No, in this case, there's no replication. Uh, of course, uh, that's a uh, configuration that you have to do. So if you want a full replication for all, you list the by default the full replication. Uh, this cluster system uh, can also be <coughs> in a sense uh, sorry can also be is it possible to configure this cluster live in the sense we have uh, four nodes yeah. and we're inserting data and we established it's not in this uh, space, we need a, an extra node. Ah, yeah, 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 it's, uh, there's an app discovery. Uh, yeah. mm. So if you just tell them your node, where the master is, the, if we call the master and the, all the, the network will, uh, will be connected. Yeah, but it's not completely distributed. There, there is a master and if this master falls down and the system is broken. Uh, no, no, no. Mm, well, that's you have a first. As I said, it's a multi-master, so you can have more than one master. If a master goes down, uh, the first uh, slave becomes the master. That until uh, all of your servers goes down, but <laughs> it's just that lack. Yes. Do you guys have built in graph functions like a shortest path or a star into the, into the SQL like query language? Not right now. Mm, you can talk, uh, ask at the community and we'll evaluate the, the, this possibility. We, mm, the main concept of Orient is not to be just a graph to be 
so um, adding uh, a lot of features may, <coughs> may be a problem. So, uh, 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 you can use shortest path by using the blueprint stack and using a, uh, a lot of algorithm already implemented. So, if you need uh, some algorithm, just uh, get uh, the use the, the full stack of uh, blueprints. Uh, there are a lot of algorithm already, already implemented, like shortest path, page rank, uh, and other. Uh, you can create custom function, then it's very easy, just uh, the interface and plug in the engine uh, or, uh, yeah, or ask the community to, to create it because it, it's interesting for other people uh, to to it for, for, the, for the user. Okay, so yeah. at some point you showed in a slide uh, Random syntax that uh, was possible to load a database. Maybe I mis misunderstood you. You meant by that <coughs> load a graph directly from a file. Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said in this case. Okay. Yeah, that was a graph. And you also said at some point it should be also possible to load it directly from another database. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I said in this case we are using an XML to load a graph. If we we open a connection to. Uh, database that already has an aggregate in it. Uh, mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. <laughs> 